Hello folks, welcome to this review for the HTC Vive XR Elite and I want to start by saying that this is not a sponsored video. I purchased this product myself, paid for it with my own money and have been using it quite extensively for the last week or so. And I will tell you from the get-go that I have been very happy with this headset. I'm not sure exactly the market that HTC are going for here. However, for the gaming headset market, I would say it is definitely a premium product. So yes, this headset can be used wirelessly, either as a standalone device or connected to your computer for PC VR. And interestingly, out of all the headsets that I've used and seen, this is one of the most portable of them. You can tell by the form factor here, this thing is not very big, weighing in at about 600 grams with the battery pack, or if you disconnect the battery pack, you can still use the headset via an alternate power source. It weighs just 300 grams. In fact, let me correct that, under 300 grams. However, despite its small form factor, you are still getting top quality VR here, along with mixed reality, since we have the pass-through feature, which I'll talk about a little later. HTC have also included two controllers in the box with the headset, and the whole system uses inside-out tracking, so no external sensors are required, and you do get the complete six degrees of freedom. So come and join me, let's go ahead and enter VR. Right, so let's get into the nitty gritty of the tech specs. And the XR Elite uses the Snapdragon XR2 processor. It would have been nice to have seen the XR2 Plus here, which according to Qualcomm is 30% faster than the XR2. However, my suspicion is that HTC wanted to make sure that their headset was priced under that of the Quest Pro. However, this is still a good processor and it is being combined with 16 gigabytes of RAM, greater than the Quest Pro's 12 gigabytes. However, the 128 gigabytes of storage on the XR Elite is only half of the 256 gigabytes that is found on the Quest Pro. So in terms of optics, HTC have opted for pancake lenses here, which should bring less pronounced rays and flares. There are dual LCD screens, each running at 1920 by 1920 for a combined resolution at just about 4K, which is actually slightly more than that which is offered on the Quest Pro. The maximum refresh rate is 90 Hertz and the maximum field of view is 110 degrees. And I would say the field of view is fairly average, okay? It hasn't blown me away at all. The headset itself is very light. It comes in at 625 grams, with the back battery unit attached, or if you have the XR Elite in its glasses mode, then the total weight is just 273 grams. And I do suspect that the smaller form factor of the XR Elite has proven to be a little bit more limiting when it comes to these other design choices. In terms of connections, the XR Elite does utilize USB-C 3.2, which will both allow charging of the device and also connecting it to your computer for PC VR experiences. For wireless, Bluetooth 5.2 is here, and for Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6E, yay! So if you want to do wireless PC VR gaming and you have network hardware that supports Wi-Fi 6E, then you are going to be able to expect a pretty seamless experience there. The headset is also compatible with PC VR over standard Wi-Fi 6 and also Wi-Fi 5, but obviously you may have more issues with latency. For the best possible wireless PC VR experience, you want a computer that is connected to your network via a LAN cable, and then the headset connected via Wi-Fi 6E directly to your router that is in the same room. There are also two inbuilt speakers here, which are very small, they position over your ears. They are not as impressive as, say, those that are included with the Valve Index. However, they produce a decent sound, I'm not an audiophile, however, I do notice that the lows of the sound are perhaps not that impressive. However, the general mids and highs are fine, and I think they do a satisfactory job. On the left-hand strap, there is a handy volume adjustment button, and just next to that on the front of the headset, there is the main button which allows you to both power on and off the headset and also access pass-through mode. And speaking of pass-through mode, I've been quite impressed with this feature. Now, this is the first headset I've ever used that has a pass-through mode. However, it's certainly something that's coming useful for me. So this is made possible thanks to a 16 megapixel camera, which has full RGB capability. So this is not a black and white pass-through, this is full color, and you do get a complete stereoscopic 3D image, which 
fairly accurately represents the surroundings that you are in. The only caveat to that is that when you bring objects up close, for example, maybe your hands or the controllers, they do look out of proportion in terms of their size, very big in fact, okay? But apart from that, that distance there for about 30 centimeters, 12 inches or so, everything does look pretty good. Now HTC have also included two controllers in the package. The whole system uses inside out tracking, so no need for any external sensors. And coming from the Valve Index, this is my first time using inside out tracking, and I'm surprised how well it actually works. And it does seem to be the case that the cameras continue to track slightly out of your own field of vision, so that even when the controllers cannot be seen, they can still be tracked to some degree. But it doesn't stop there because we also have hand tracking, okay? So if you are not using the controllers, there are various hand gestures you can do and the XR Elite will pick those up. You can see your virtual hands moving as you move them in real life. It's all very clever. The only downside, at least right now, is that a lot of games, software and apps are not compatible with hand gestures. So we still need to wait and see to really understand how this feature is going to be used. Also, while we are on the subject of tracking, sadly, there is no eye tracking here as is the case with the new PSVR headset. There is a physical IPD adjustment button positioned underneath the bottom of the headset and this allows you to adjust the setting from 54mm to 73mm. Now certainly one of the unique features of the XR Elite is the fact that it has physical diopters on each lens which allow you to adjust to your prescription if you wear glasses. Now, I've seen a lot of people hailing this as a revolutionary new feature for VR, but it does actually have its drawbacks. Now, first off, I do think that this is a solution to a problem that HTC have created for themselves. The smaller form factor here means that it is physically impossible to wear glasses whilst also wearing the headset. And that means the only way to really have a crisp, sharp image as a glasses wearer is to use the diopters. The main problem here is that not all prescriptions are covered. Now, I myself do not wear glasses, so I don't need to change the settings. And so the headset works absolutely fine for me. My wife, on the other hand, she requires prisms in her glasses. That isn't an option here, so changing the prescription is utterly irrelevant. My wife simply cannot use the XR Elite. She could use the Valve Index. It wasn't particularly comfortable for her to put her glasses on and wear the headset over the top, but she could do it. Here, it's not even an option. Okay, if you do wear glasses and the diopters can adjust to your prescription, brilliant. You're gonna have a great time, you're gonna have a crisp image, and it's going to be the most comfortable for you. So it is just something to consider. The face cushion, I would say it's quite thin. It has a rigid frame that is masked by a soft fabric material. It's fairly comfortable when the headset is correctly positioned. However, there's not a lot of leeway here. If you over tighten, then this thing is going to start digging into your face quite quickly. Now, the face cushion does connect to the main body of the headset via a magnet, so it's very easy to snap on and snap off. However, maybe a little bit too easy. I often find the face cushion is coming off simply by putting the headset itself on or off from my head. So having actually gone over the technical specifications, as I mentioned at the start of the video, my own experience with the XR Elite has been a positive one. For the optics, well, first of all, I cannot even see any screen door effect. Uh, that said, the FOV at 110 degrees, which is what it's advertised at, it does feel a little bit limiting. Now, don't get me wrong, the FOV is not bad, okay? It's certainly no worse than what I've experienced with my other VR headsets, but it's no better either. And seven to eight years into modern VR, the FOV experience just hasn't really changed. But the image quality itself, I am very impressed with. It is crisp, it is sharp, the sweet spot is forgiving, and I would go as far as to say that the picture is probably the best I've ever experienced in a VR headset. And the fact that this headset can also perform mixed reality with the pass-through feature, which also presents a very impressive image using the 16MP camera, I think it's just a great overall package. As for the overall comfort when wearing the XR Elite, my results may not be the same for you. But overall, I am happy with the approach that's been taken. This is a very different kind of headset to what you may be familiar with. There is no significant headband that connects the front of the headset to the back, okay? There is a little thin headband that comes in the box that you can use, although it is optional. I'm not too sure exactly what effect it has for most people. It doesn't seem to have much effect for me. 
because the way this headset works is that it puts pressure on both the front and the back of your head rather than lifting that pressure up from above. And for the most part, I would say that it works okay. You just have to make sure that the device is correctly fitted. If the headset is too loose, then of course it's going to move all over your head. But if it's too tight, then it is quite an uncomfortable experience. So there is a sweet spot for the right fit, which is going to be different for every person. And you will need to spend a little bit of time finding that every time you put this on. However, one thing I love doing is not worrying about that at all and just transforming the headset through its modular design and wearing it in glasses mode. So glasses mode takes all the pressure off the front and back of your head and it simply has a little bit of pressure on the sides where these plastic bands sort of rest into your temple. Now the thing with glasses mode is because it's not as tight a fit you do get a little bit more light leakage however the headset does still feel very secure. However the headset does feel more comfortable for me personally in this mode and with a battery pack in my pocket, I can still take full advantage of the wireless capabilities. And very briefly, talking about battery, the battery that comes with the XR Elite will give you up to two hours of use on a full charge. Again, you may want to consider glasses mode. A battery pack such as the one I'm using will give about six to seven hours. And then I always have this for emergencies if I need to swap out quickly. But obviously how you use the XR Elite is going to be entirely up to you. And the way I like to use it may very well differ from the way you prefer to use it. And that's absolutely fine. The great thing is we have choice here. So we've spoken quite a bit about the hardware, which is very impressive. But ultimately, the hardware is only as good as the software. And if the software is lacking, then the whole product is also lacking. And sadly, in some areas, the software is. So when you are not connected to a computer and you are using this XR Elite in its standalone form, then you will be doing so through Viveport, which is HTC's own software interface. And it's a little bit mediocre if I'm honest with you. So I'm gonna pop the headset on and show you around the main interface. Okay, so this is the main home screen here that HTC have given us. And despite looking for quite a bit of time, I've not figured out how to actually change this environment. So it seems I am stuck here. Now the interface is functional but basic. If we access our library here, we can see we have our installed VR or if we want to see the PC VR library, we can just select the installed option here under PC, although we will need a connection either through USB or Wi-Fi to our computer in order to access that. But if we have a Steam library, then that's how we access it there. Uh, we can also go ahead and access Vive port. And if you want to use the XR Elite as a standalone device without connecting to a computer, you will have to do so through Viveport, which as I say, unfortunately, doesn't give you a huge amount of choice at the moment. But TLDR HTC software library at the moment is not all that impressive. But hopefully over the coming months, it will be updated regularly. I'm sure that it will, but for launch, it's a little bit of a letdown. For me, most of my time with the XR Elite up until this point has been through PC VR, connecting wirelessly. The good thing is, is that the Vive streaming hub software is already installed on the headset by default. So you just need to download the app onto your computer, get that installed and you are good to go. And then you have all of the VR software available to you that you have on your computer. And if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. We are almost at the end of the review, but there are just a couple more things to be complete that I wanna go through with you. Since some of you will be wanting to use the XR Elite in apps that allow for VR chat, you may care to know that the device does come with dual microphones. So here's an audio test for you. Okay, folks, so I am now wearing my HTC Vive XR Elite headset. This is a mic test for the headset. I will not edit this audio clip in any way or enhance it at all. So you are hearing the raw audio file directly as the headset recorded it. How does it sound to you guys? Right, so on the front here, there is a depth sensor and this is going to aid with tracking and just help to create that seamless tracking experience, which I do think works very well. And on the other side where you actually put your face, there is a proximity sensor. And what this will do is detect when you are using the headset and when you are not using it, it will automatically and very quickly drop down into sleep mode. It's just another convenient feature that is built directly into the hardware here. But there's also this kind of hidden USB-C port on the side of the headset by the faceplate. And this will allow you to connect various accessories that can then be used with the XR Elite. So yeah, it'd be interested to see how this gets used. 
So in conclusion, the Vive XR Elite has given me my favorite VR experience to date. Having come from other products that only offer VR, I wasn't expecting to use the pass-through functionality all that much, but I have been doing so. It's just so super convenient, and the apps and software, although limited at the moment, that support that are also a lot of fun. The kids especially do love playing about in the mixed reality of Open Rush. So ultimately, the XR Elite, it is just a fantastic bit of kit. I can clearly see where HTC have learned lessons from previous generations of their hardware. There are definitely elements of the Vive Flow here in terms of the overall design, but it has also taken things to another level. The fact that we can even get top quality virtual reality here in such a small form factor headset is something that I think would have been unbelievable just a few short years ago. Of course, nothing in life is perfect. I would eventually really like to see an improved field of view going forward in future generations, because I think it's about time for that. And the software here based on Viveport is also somewhat mediocre. Fortunately, as long as you can connect this to your computer using PC VR, then you still have a whole wealth of software games and apps available to you. But if you are currently in the market for a VR or mixed reality headset, then I could definitely recommend the Vive XR Elite to you. Despite those few shortcomings that I've mentioned, I think overall it does provide a lot of flexibility and just gives a great overall experience. But folks, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching this video review. If it's helped you, please don't forget to maybe drop a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for future content. Maybe I'll see you in VR. Bye for now.